All right, open your Bibles to John chapter 21. John chapter 21. I hate to tell you this. I'm going to have to be a fundamentalist. Now, this is a painful experience for me, beloved. But anyway, um, I am going to be a fundamentalist uh, just, just momentarily. Uh, because it only takes a moment to do this, and because um, uh, only a moment is about how much I can take of being one. I'm not ripping on fundamentalists. What I mean is uh, I'm talking about how this Bible is corrected or attacked uh, in church services like this one. And so what I'm going to give you, now look, uh, you, you remember I told you last night about PIDA? I said, um, uh, they'll say this, and I'll say this, and they'll say this, and I'll say this. And that was kind of prophecy. In other words, I, I knew where they would go. And then... Uh, the, the head of the New King James ended up going exactly down the path the way I had prophesied. What I'm going to give you now is not me making this up. I am going to read this and, and I'm going to talk to you exactly as I heard a preacher deliver this passage of Scripture. Uh, John chapter 21 and look at verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, uh, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Now, beloved, you ignorant folks who do not have $70,000 in your way like I do. But because I have $70,000 in your brain, I'll save you the money and destroy your Bible. Um, what you don't know, because you don't know Greek like I know Greek. In those three verses, verse 15 and 16 and 17, our dear Lord, and that's one they say a lot too, uh, our dear Lord uses two different Greek words for love. Uh, there are two Greek words for love. There is the word agape. And agape is, is what is known as a deep, intimate, selfless love. And, and then there is a more casual love, like I'm just your buddy, and that is called phileo love. And our dear Lord uh, wanted agape love from, from Peter, he wanted him to love with the deep, intimate, selfless love. So he said, Peter, uh, when he asked him, do you love me, or love us me, he asked him agape. That is the Greek word that he used. And Peter, afraid of that much of a commitment, said, well, I love you with a casual, friendly love. And, and so Peter responded by saying phileo instead of agape. The Lord, not getting the answer that he wanted, asked him again and said, Peter, do you love me with agape love? Do you love me with a deep, intimate, selfless love? Peter, again, as I said, <clears throat> afraid of that, that total commitment. How many Christians are afraid of total commitment? Uh, said, well, I'll tell you, I love you as a friend. Not a deep, intimate, selfless love, but as a, as a pal. And the Lord, seeing that he was not going to get the answer that he wanted, said, okay, okay, then. And he changed from agape, and he said this in the, verse 17. Okay, okay, Peter, then, do you love me as a pal? Do you love me, you know, as a friend? Casual friend you love. And Peter, you saw in the passage, was grieved because the Lord changed from agape to phileo. And he said, yes, Lord, I love you with phileo love. I love you with a casual, friendly love, but I don't love you with an agape love. Now, beloved, beloved, uh, because you are shackled by the English language, you don't know what I know. And that's what I just told you. And aren't you glad I came here to show you that you needed to know about agape, agape, and phileo? Uh, and that is why we need Greek, and we can't rely completely on the English. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Um, I'll tell you what I just told you that is true. What I told you that is true is that the Lord, in verse 15, said agape. and 16, he said agape. And in 17, he said phileo. That's true. But the teaching that agape is one kind of love and phileo is another... If you will take that teaching, and if you will slip it between two pieces of bread, you will have a bologna sandwich. <laughs> now, <clears throat> let me ask you, how many of you have heard that passage taught in some fashion like that? Let me see your hands. All right. I'm not going to ask you how many of you believed it. Okay? And I'm not going to blame you if you did. You know why? 
because of the Greek game, the, the guy overwhelmed you. You, don't, you figure, well, I can't argue with him. I can only go along with it. So we're going to look at this, okay? Uh, and you say, you mean you're going to prove that agape and phileo are not two different kinds of love? No, no I'm not. You are. You are going to prove it. And you may not even know this, but this isn't even. This whole lesson isn't even about agape and phileo. We are going to look at agape and phileo because we want to answer <clears throat> the ultimate question. Do you know what the ultimate question is? You should want to know these things. If the Lord Jesus Christ were on the earth right now and spoke English, here's the question. Would he say, Ain't. And y'all, y'all don't look well. That is what we're going to find out today. You say, preacher, no, think about it. You're allowed to think about it. You're even allowed to form an opinion. You can form an opinion right now. Don't voice it because nobody really wants to hear it. It's just like being home, isn't it, pal? But, um, but, but think about it. If the Lord was here and he spoke English, would he say, ain't? We'll get back to that. The reason I put that up there is because I sometimes forget about that, and you have to remind me. All right, agape and phileo, agape and phileo. Uh, again, agape is uh, supposed to be uh, a deep intimate, selfless love. Phileo is a casual, friendly love. Now, I'm about to give you a test, and uh, I want you to uh, I want somebody to tell me what this is. You guys are good. What is this? You're real good. What if I told you this? What if I told you I'm going to give you a test with 25 questions on it, and all I'm going to do is put these. If I said I'm going to give you a test, and I'm going to put these two little symbols here, and all you have to do is put a T where you think it's a triangle and a C where you think it's a circle. You think you could pass you think? Because I'm going to give you a test, and, and I'm going to tell you how to pass, and everyone here will fail. All right? But the object is not to fail. The object is to follow the rule. Uh, and the rule is that agape and phileo are two different kinds of love. Um, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> what if I told you, uh, uh, let's say, okay, okay, uh, anybody here, how many of you have never been in Kansas? All right. What if I told you, I've been in Kansas. I've been in Kansas. Anyway, <clears throat> what if I told you I was in Kansas and I was driving down the road. At the end of this road, uh, there was this sign and it was, it was red and it had eight sides and it had four letters on it. Could somebody tell me what that sign is? Ever been in Kansas? So how do you know? Oh, you're all right. I'm not, I'm not challenging you, Lee. You're doing good. You're doing good. All stop signs are red with eight sides with, with four white letters on Correct? S-T-O-P. I, I didn't mean to embarrass you. Okay? But, um, all right, guys, guys. So, in fact, I was over in Romania uh, preaching back in 1992. And believe it or not, in Romania, you know what stop signs look like? They're red. They have eight sides. And they say S-T-O-P. Which may explain why there's a lot of Traffic accidents in Romania. But what I'm saying is, isn't eight sides red with, with the word stop on it? Isn't that a, a, a rule? It is such a rule that you people who have never been in Kansas know that all the Kansas stop signs look just like the ones here. Correct? You say, why? Because it's a rule. All right, here's what I say. If agape is one kind of love and phileo is another, then I don't have to look at John chapter 21 to see that. I should be able to see that throughout the Bible. Correct? All right. Now, I'm going to tell you who leads you astray. The guy that leads you astray is your godly Greek professor, your godly pastor. I don't mean your pastor, but the pastor that corrects the Bible from English or, uh, you know, whatever, some, some preacher somewhere along the line. And I've had people say, well, the King James Bible, you know, my Greek professor, he even told me it's got mistakes in it. And he's a godly man. Let me ask you a question. Do you think your great professor was more godly than this guy right here? The Apostle Paul. I don't think your Greek professor or whoever led you to Christ or whoever this godly person is, uh, or you, uh, I don't think they're more godly than Paul. 
what about this guy here? The Apostle John. You think he compares? How about this guy right here? We aren't going to look at what your godly Greek professor's opinion is of agape and phileo, because he didn't know what he's talking about. We're going to look at how Paul, John, and Peter wrote and used. Now, wait, wait, don't you think this, if this is a rule, don't you think that every time uh, John, Peter, and, and Paul used agape, they would be a deep, intimate, selfless love, and they used phileo, it'd be a casual, friendly love? And if that, if you won't go along with those three guys, look, these three guys were led of God, Right? This one was God. So we're going to examine how the Lord Jesus Christ and how these three inspired writers used uh, agape and phileo. Now, I need some guys to come up here and pass these out. And uh, I'll let you uh, spread them out when you want anyone. Now, don't start taking this until I tell you. And I'm going to tell you how to not, I'm going to tell you how to not fail. Don't take it. I give this thing, man, I've got to give this to a room full of preachers. And you'd be surprised how many pastors or preachers will not take it. And here's what they say. I'll go, because uh, they know they're going to fail. And I'll say, hey, uh, you forgot to take the test. And the guy goes, well, I, I wanted a blank one. Well, what good is a blank one if you don't have a master? So let me tell you this. If you want a blank one, we will get you a blank one. <laughs> and by the time we're done, you'll have a master. All right? So, so here's what I want you to not do. Uh, I don't want you to, to say, uh, don't try to outguess like, like this. I had one guy, he said, um, here's what we're looking at. We're looking at, uh, well, here, I'll, I'll explain it. Let's read the rules uh, at the top. Uh, instructions, read the Bible quote. I will do that for you. Put an A or P in the blank before the quote to signify your choice of the Greek word used, agape or phileo. So very simply, here's what we're going to do. We're going to read a verse, uh, and it's going to have the Greek word, uh, it's going to have the word love in it, and it's either agape or phileo. I will tell you it is one of those two, obviously. Now, because you do have enough sense to understand a rule, right? Let me ask you this. If you don't, if you can't recognize a stop sign, don't take the test. But if you can recognize a stop sign, you should take this test. And, and what you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, that should be agape, and that one should be phileo, and that one should be agape, and that one should be agape, and that one's phileo, and this one's agape, because you've got enough sense to know if it's a deep, intimate, selfless love or a casual, friendly love. Don't you have that much sense? Well, that was quiet. You guys use silverware when you eat. Anyway, now, I've had people, they thought, they thought this. They, they, they go, I bet they're all A's. And so they, all agape. So they put all A's. And an A is not what they got. Um, and they put all P's. And a P is not what they got. I've had guys say, well, I thought it was agape, so I put it as phileo because I thought maybe you were trying to fool us. Guys, the object is to follow the rule. And the rule is definitions. Agape is a deep, intimate, selfless love. And phileo is a casual, friendly love. So if you have your pen or pencil ready... We will take this test, and, uh, and, uh, and you will see. Now, now, remember, I don't believe there's a difference between agape and phileo. But in this test, we are accepting that as the rule, that agape is deep in its selfless love, and phileo is a casual, friendly love, and, and we will answer accordingly. Number one, uh, this is how Jesus used agape and phileo. I know how Jesus used agape and phileo. The right way. Right? I mean, I say, how do you use it? Right? Uh, yeah, but how did he use it? Correctly. Didn't, didn't Jesus invent language? I figured he probably got it right. Okay, number one, Luke chapter 11 and verse 42, the love of God. So what kind of love does God have for us? Uh, is it agape love, a deep intimate selfless love, or phileo love, casual friendly love? Put an A or P. Number two, John chapter 5 and verse 42. The love of God. Again, <clears throat> what kind of love does God the Father have for us? Is it agape love, deep in selfless love, or phileo love, casual friendly love, A or P? Number three, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me. So what kind of love did they have for their father and mother that they should have had that kind of love for the Lord? Agape love, deep in selfless love, or phileo love, casual friendly love, A or P? 
Number four, Revelation in chapter 3 and verse 9, to know that I have loved thee. What kind of love does the Lord have here? Is it agape love, deep in a selfless love, or phileo love, casual friendly love, A or P? Number five, uh, Revelation 3.19, uh, referring to the uh, Laodicean church. In case you don't know who that is, go look in a mirror. That's us. Okay? So what kind of love does the Lord have for the Laodicean church? As many as I love. What kind of love is that? Is that agape love, deep in selfless love, or phileo love, casual friendly love, A or P? Am I giving you enough time to write A or P? Number six, Matthew chapter 23 and verse six. He's abrading the Pharisees here and he says, you love the uppermost rooms. Well, what kind of love did the Pharisees have uh, for the uppermost rooms? Was it agape love, deep in selfless love, or phileo love, casual friendly love, A or P? Number seven, John chapter 12 and verse 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it. What kind of love did they have for their life? Was it agape love, deep in selfless love, or phileo love, casual friendly love, A or P? Uh, number eight. This is the parallel to number six. Uh, there, Matthew 23, six. This is Luke 11, 43. And he says to the Pharisees, you love the uppermost seats. What kind of love did they have for the uppermost seats? Uh, agape love, deep in a selfless, intimate selfless love, or flail love, casual friendly love, A, repeat. Uh, number nine, John chapter five and verse 20, the father loveth the son. Okay, we know that. What kind of love does the father have for the son? Is it agape love, deep in a self, intimate, intimate selfless love, or flail love, casual friendly love, A, repeat. And now part two is how New Testament writers used agape and phileo. Of course, these New Testament writers are going to be Paul and John and Peter, okay? And like I said, these guys have been led of the Holy Ghost. I know they used it right also. Uh, number 11, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 4, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. So what kind of lover of pleasure were they that they should have been that kind of a lover of God? <clears throat> Agape love, deep in intimate selfless love, or phileo love, casual friendly love, A or P. Number 12, John chapter 11, verse 5, Jesus loved Martha. What kind of love? You know Martha and Mary. Mary uh, Martha was the one cumbered about much serving. Uh, what kind of love did the Lord have for Martha? Was it agape love, deep intimate selfless love, or phileo love, casual friendly love, A or P? Number 13, John chapter 20 and verse 2, the other disciple whom Jesus loved. That other disciple is John, the apostle, the one that's writing those words. What kind of love did the Lord have for John the Apostle? Uh, pillowed his head on the breast of the Lord at the Last Supper. Uh, was it agape love, deep, intimate, selfless love, or phileo love, casual, friendly love, A or P? Uh, number 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 22. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, cursed. So what kind of love had you better have for the Lord Jesus Christ so you're not cursed? Agape love, deep, intimate, selfless love, or phileo love, casual, friendly love, A or P? Number 15, <clears throat> Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, that God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Well, what kind of love did God commend toward us? Was it agape love, deep, intimate, selfless love, or phileo love, casual, friendly love, A, or P? Number 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 24, my love be with you all. This is the apostle. He is closing the Corinthian letter and he's telling the Corinthians he loves them. Well, how does he love them? Is it agape love, deep, intimate, selfless love, or phileo love? Casual, friendly love, A or P. Number 17, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. Uh, God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. <laughs> okay, so um, what kind of spirit of love did he give us? Was it the spirit of agape love, deep in selfless love, or phileo love, casual, friendly love, A or P? Number 18, Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. Uh, one another with brotherly love. This is the brotherly love that we should have for each other. Well, what kind of love should we have for each other? Agape love, deep, intimate, selfless love, or phileo love, casual, friendly love, A or P. Number 19, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 12. Abound in love one toward another. Again, uh, a reference to the, the love that we should have as brethren. So what kind of love should we have for each other? Agape love, deep, intimate, selfless love, phileo love. Casual friendly love, A or P. 
I actually had a guy think that I was giving the answers away in how I say that. Yeah, you know, I say agape love, deep into selfless love, fail of casual friendly love. And this guy said, there's a code there. I said, you watch too many movies. <laughs> really? I mean, that's just, man, I, you know, this, where this guy dwells, there's no oxygen in his air. Uh, number, number 20. The chair has fallen over. The chair has fallen over. Oh, anyway. Uh, number 20, Titus. Uh, Titus chapter 2, verse 4. Women to be sober, to love their husbands. What kind of woman? Uh, what kind of woman? What kind of love uh, should a woman have for her husband? Uh, agape love, deep, intimate, selfless love, or phileo love, casual, friendly love? A, repeat. 21, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 28. So ought men to love their wives. <clears throat> How should men love their wives? With agape love, deep, intimate, selfless love, or phileo love, casual, friendly love, A, or P. 22, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 17. Uh, love the brotherhood. <laughs> I, can, I, just, is this, I feel like that's in a mafia oath. Don't you? <laughs> yeah. Love the brotherhood or we'll must you up. Uh, so what kind of love should we have for one another, the brotherhood? Uh, agape love, deep in the selfless love, or phileo love, casual, friendly love, A, or P. Number 23, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 1. Let brotherly love continue. So what kind of love again is that uh, we should let continue? Agape love, deep in the selfless love, or phileo love, casual, friendly love, A, or P. Number 24, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 5. In him verily is the love of God perfected. What is the love of God? Is it agape love, deep, intimate, selfless love, or phileo love, casual, friendly love, A or P? And then number 25, Titus chapter 3 and verse 4, uh, the love of God our Savior. What is the love of God our Savior? Is it agape love, <clears throat> deep, intimate, selfless love, or phileo love, casual, friendly love, A or P? Did I skip 10? Was he dozing? Do you have? I don't know. Did I skip ten? Oh, you just want support, Nick. Shut up. Everybody else said he didn't skip it. Everybody said I didn't skip it. You're like, oh yeah, Pastor said so. Yeah, you skipped it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're an apostate too. If he said so, I went to check. Okay. Um, <clears throat> number ten. Number ten. For those of you who may not have heard it, I don't even know if I said it because I don't listen to me. I'm very much like my children. Uh, John chapter 16, verse 27. The Father himself, uh, himself loveth you. I think I did skip it. I don't remember reading it. Anyway, the Father himself loveth you. So what kind of love does the Father have for you? Is it agape love, uh, deep in selfless love, filial love, casual, friendly love? Some of you probably had to scratch out your answer because now I read it. All right. Remember when you used to trade papers in school? Don't do that. I want you to enjoy grading your own paper. Okay, number one, uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 42, the love of God. If, if agape love is a deep, intimate, selfless love, and phileo love is a casual, friendly love, and we hear about the love of God, what, kind should, what should it be, agape or phileo? It is agape. Number two, John chapter 5 and verse 42, again, what should the love of God be, agape or phileo? It is agape. Now, before you get heady, do you guys know what a gimme is? A gimme is when your teacher like gives you credit for spelling your name right or you're breathing or you're sitting upright or you didn't drool today. Um, those are the gimmies. I gave you those figuring you can't get those two wrong. And if you really want to look good, now is the time to leave. So you can say, well, I couldn't stay for the whole thing, but when I left, I was passing. <laughs> Okay, number three, Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. <clears throat> he that loveth father or mother more than me, then what kind of love did he have for his father and mother that they should have for the Lord? A God phileo. Phileo. Told you you should have left. Number four, Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. To know that I have loved thee. What kind of love did the Lord have for him? A God phileo. It's agape. Number five, Revelation chapter three and verse 19, the, uh, the uh, Laodicean church, as many as I love. What kind of love does the Lord have for the, the Laodicean church? Agape or phileo? Phileo. And you can check the Greek, if you can check the Greek. <laughs> I mean, if you have, like I do, you can go ahead and check the Greek. 
Number six, Matthew chapter 23, verse six. Uh, the the uh, Pharisees, they love the uppermost rooms. What kind of love do they have for the uppermost rooms? Agape or phileo? Phileo. Number seven, <clears throat> John chapter 12, verse 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it. What kind of love did they have for their life? Agape or phileo? Phileo. Number eight, Luke chapter 11 and verse 43, the parallel to Luke uh, or to Matthew 23, 6. Uh, the Pharisees, you love the uppermost seats. What kind of love did they have for the uppermost seats? Agape or phileo? Agape. Now, all I can figure is they must have walked in and went, oh, man, I love this room. Yeah, I love this room. Whoa, I love these seats. <clears throat> Number nine, John chapter five and verse 20, the father loveth the son. What kind of love does God the father have for the son? Phileo. Yep. It's phileo. Number 11. <laughs> he liked to hurt his neck. He snapped it up so fast. <laughs> I said that. I look great. Oh, amen, amen. All right, number 10, number 10. John chapter 16, verse 27. The Father himself loveth you. What kind of love does God the Father have for you? God bear phileo. Phileo. And after a while, you know what I start getting? I start getting, I, I'll go, I got bear phileo. People go, phileo. Phileo. I tell you the truth. Why do you Okay, now we'll go to number 11. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. What kind of lover of pleasure were they <clears throat> that they should have been that kind of a lover of God? I got their flail. Phileo. Number 12, John eleven five. 5, Jesus loved Martha. What kind of love did Jesus love Martha with? Agape or phileo? It is agape. <clears throat> Number 13, John 20, verse 2, the other disciple whom Jesus loved. What kind of love did the Lord have for the apostle John? Agape or phileo? Phileo. How can you imagine that? Here's this carnal woman coming about much serving. She didn't even stay in the room where he was at, and Jesus loved her. Here's John the Apostle, the one that actually went into the Herod's palace with him. I mean, this guy had, you know, he, he loved the Lord, and, and the Lord says, he said, oh, yeah, I love Martha. John, hey, Lord, you're right. Hey, okay, we did some fishing together. Uh -huh. uh, number 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema. What kind of love for the Lord had you better have? Agape or phileo? Phileo. Which, by the way, if that's all that's required, what's wrong with what Peter said? He met the qualification. Number 15, uh, Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. But God commended his love toward us in that while we are sinners, Christ died for us. What should that be? Agape or phileo? Agape. 16, 1 Corinthians 16, 24, my love be with you all. Paul, closing the Corinthian letter, what kind of love did he have for the Corinthians? Agape or phileo? Agape. Now, wait a second. Look at number 14. Under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Paul just said, you only have to have phileo love for God. Then two verses later, he closes, closes it and talks to the most carnal church in the New Testament and says, but I got more than that for you. If there's a difference. There's no difference. 17, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. Uh, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. What kind of uh, spirit of love did he give us? A God, or flail? Yeah. Agape. Except for Peter, who got the phileo spirit. <clears throat> Number 18, uh, Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. One to another with brotherly love. What kind of love should we have for each other as brethren? Agape love or phileo love? Phileo. Told you should have left. Number 19, 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 12. Love, uh, abound in love one toward another. Again, what kind of love should we have for each other? Agape or phileo? It's agape. Number 20, Titus chapter 2 and verse 4. Women to be sober, to love their husbands. What kind of love should a woman have for her husband? Mindless, thoughtless, selfless. Oh, I'm sorry. Um... Phileo. That's when I knew there was a problem. 
21, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 28. So ought men to love their wives. What kind of love should a man have for his wife? A copy of flannel. Yeah, copy. And I am bummed out. I mean, I've got to have this agape love. What do I get? Oh, there's a handshake instead of a kiss, honey. Go to bed. <laughs> Number 22, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17. Love the brotherhood. Oh, no, no. When they talk like that, it's agape. <laughs> when the guy's packing, you just love him to death. Number 23, Hebrews 13, verse 1. Let brotherly love continue. What kind of love should we have for each other? Agape or phileo? Phileo. Number 24, 1 John chapter 2, verse 5. In him verily is the love of God perfected. What kind of love does God have? Agape or phileo? Agape. 25, Titus chapter 3 and verse 4. The love of God our Savior. What kind of love does God our Savior have for us? Agape or phileo? Phileo. You know what I look forward to? I look forward to when these Greek professors get to heaven and straighten Jesus Christ out on proper usage of agape and phileo. Don't you think that ought to be good? Oh, now, Lord, you should have known that agape was... Oh, but it's okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Before you, before you count yourself as having failed, did you ever have, have a test where they gave you a bonus question? I'm going to give you a chance. I'm going to give you another chance. Listen, I'm going to go, to, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I'm not only going to give you another chance, but I'm going to let you do... What you love to do, well, eating, I know, as Baptists, that's number one. But after eating, voting. We love to vote. All right, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 9. But as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. All right, now it is obvious this is the love that we should have for each other as brethren, correct? Okay, now don't be afraid to vote. Don't be afraid of being wrong. How many of you say that the Greek word used to describe this brotherly love is agape? Let me see your hands. How many of you say it is phileo? Let me see your hands. All right, now to all you cowards who did not put up a hand, you put them down. You should have, put, should have voted because you've been right. You say which one? Both both of them. But as touching brotherly love, phileo, you need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love, agape, one another. There is, under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul using both words to describe the exact same kind of love. You can't even pretend that's a different kind of love. He said, this is, I'm talking to you about brotherly love, and God told you to love one another, and he used both words in the same verse. Go tell Paul. I'll give you another. Uh, I'll give you another bonus. Go to First Peter. First Peter chapter one. First Peter chapter one. Then I'm going to answer some questions that you should have. There should be some questions coming to your mind right now, and um, <clears throat> I'll answer those, and then and then we'll uh, find out the, the ultimate the answer to the ultimate question. First uh, Peter chapter one and verse twenty two. Seeing you have purified your souls and obeying the a truth through the Spirit, an unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Okay, again, how many of you say, again, this is talking about our brotherly love. How many of you say that the love that Peter used under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that Peter said agape to define this love? How many of you say Peter used phileo to define this love? Oh, you guys, you guys that didn't vote, you should have voted. They're both right. Seeing that you have purified your souls in obeying the truth of the Spirit and the unfeigned love, phileo, of the brethren, see that ye love, agape, one another with pure heart fervently. Guys, it is obvious the same kind of love, and both Greek words were used to describe it. You say, why is that? Because, because Jesus, Paul, Peter, and John never recognized these two loves as, as two different kinds of love. Unless they really are, and these four didn't know what they were talking about. I want to see you explain it to them, okay? Now, there should be some questions coming to your mind. Now, the questions that should come to your mind are, let me get this, uh, this one. Okay, preacher, 
If there's no difference between agape and phileo, then how come the Lord used agape, agape, and phileo? Why did, why did the Lord use two different Greek words in this passage to say love? Uh, go with me, if you will, if you want the answer to that. Go to uh, Matthew, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Verse 9. Here the Lord is he's abrading the, the, um, his disciples about the feeding of the 5,000 and the feeding of the 4,000. Uh, he says in verse 9, Do you not yet understand? Uh, neither remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many baskets you took up. <clears throat> neither the seven loaves of the 7, uh, 4,000 and how many baskets you took up. Okay, guys. You see the word baskets in verse 9? That is the Greek word... Kofinus. You see the word baskets in verse 10? That's the Greek word spuridos. That's two different Greek words to say baskets. Now you say, well, why did the Lord use two different Greek words for baskets? Oh, this is a simple one. This is really easy. Kofinus. These are deep, intimate, selfless baskets. And these are just casual, friendly baskets. <laughs> these ones, you know, you carry the bread in. These you put on the kitchen wall so that people look at them and wonder why they're there. Um, guys, all right, so why did the Lord use, in two verses, two different Greek words for baskets? You know why? He wanted to. Isn't he God? I mean, doesn't the job have to have some perks? And don't you think being able to say... Kofinus to say baskets and Spiridus to say baskets. Don't you think he's got a right to do that? So, <clears throat> he used two different Greek words. Now, here's what you might say, but that doesn't mean anything, doesn't it? Go back to John. Go back to John chapter 21. And look at the end of verse 15, the last three words. What's it say? John chapter 21, verse 15, one of the last three words. Feed my lambs, Right? Look at verse last three words of verse 16. Feed my sheep. Last three words of, of uh, verse 17. Feed my sheep. Bad news, guys. When the Lord said feed, when he said feed in verse um, 15, he used the Greek word, Bosque. When he said feed in uh, verse 16, he used the Greek word poimenus. Or poimene, poimene. And when he said feed in verse 18, uh, he went back to bosque. The Lord used three, two different Greek words to say feed. You say, why? You want, to, you want to criticize him for it? You want to tell him he did it wrong? If he used two different Greek words for feed, why can't he use two different Greek words for love? I mean, he has the right to do that. Now, uh, let me say this. Oh, question, question. What you ought to be saying is this. Okay, then, if this isn't a true teaching, where did it come from? And I'll tell you where I think it came from. Now, we leave, uh, we're going to leave Sunday night after the service because we've got to get down to Pensacola. Uh, uh, to turn around, grab our motorhome, and head right back out uh, north. So we are going to make our way to Route Interstate 65 and uh, head north on 65 to get to Pensacola. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that, doesn't 65 go down there? Okay, so I'm hitting I-65 north, and I'm going to go to Pensacola. Wait a minute, wait. I'm, is I-65 the proper road? Okay, I'm going to I-65 North, and I'm going to Pensacola, correct? So what's the matter? Oh, are you guys saying I'm on the right road but going the wrong direction? Yeah, that's what happened here. You ever have a kid come home from Bible college? And you ever, it's, it just kills me, man. It just kills me. This kid comes, they're all awed by their Greek professor. And they go, my Greek professor. 
does his daily devotions from the Greek New Testament. And they're so odd. And I always go like this. Who told you that? My Greek professor. <laughs> you know why, don't you? Because you go say the, 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 the brain. He went so stupid. Mush heads to know it. So here's what this is. I think this came from being in the right on the right road, the Bible, but going the wrong direction, thinking you can get a nugget from the Greek. And I think one of those guys was doing his Greek New Testament devotions, and he came across agape, agape, phileo, and said, gee, maybe they mean two different things. And I think he made this up. You say, where else could it come from? I don't know. I'm telling you, I think that's what it was. All right. I know this. He didn't get it from, from the way Jesus used them, or Paul, or John, or Peter, correct? So definitely he got it from the wrong source somewhere. And that's what happens. I mean, why would you... You know what this is like? This is like standing out in front of a gold mine, and you're, and you're trying to pick up these little uh, pieces of gold, these nuggets of gold the size of the head of a pin, and behind you, you got a vein that is 66 feet wide all the way back into the mine. And you're, and you're not going in there because it says King James over the door. All right, all right. Now, let me tell you... Uh, uh, oh, by the way, by the way, you may not know this. You didn't even need this. You didn't even need this. You see, I said something that wasn't entirely true. I didn't lie to you. You remember I told you I'm going to teach this the way I heard a guy teach it? And that guy taught this passage, and he said, uh, the Lord said agape, and Peter said phileo, and he said, you know, there are two different kinds of love. And they said, the Lord said agape, uh, and Peter said phileo. Now, look here. The Lord said this and this. How many times did he say agape? How many times did he say phileo? And, and remember I said, this guy said, uh, God said, the Lord said, agape, agape, not getting the answer he wanted, he changed to phileo. And Peter was grieved because he changed from agape to phileo. Remember I said that? That wasn't true. But that's what this preacher said. But what does verse 17 say? It doesn't say, look guys, if Peter was grieved because he changed from agape to phileo, wouldn't verse 17 say Peter was grieved because he changed from agape to phileo? But what does it, what was he grieved about? He said in the third time, third time, Simon son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time. Can I ask you a question? What in the world did Peter say three times? Or did the Lord say three times? He didn't say agape three times. He only said it twice. He didn't say phileo three times. He only said that once. You know what he said three times? Love. Now, let me tell you what happened, and then I'll, I'll, I'll give you the answer to that, and then we'll take our break. Some years ago, <clears throat> I, was, uh, I was at a multi-preacher meeting, uh, and, and we, um, it's after the meeting is over, so I'm sitting in a restaurant. Right across from me is a Cuban pastor friend of mine who is a King James Bible believer and loves the book. And sitting next, next to him is a very good man. I don't want you to think this guy's a bad guy. Uh, he has a photographic memory. He really does. He has huge passages of Scripture committed to memory. I mean, he would just go on and on and on. I, I also have a photographic memory. <clears throat> it just never developed. But... Um, and this guy is a King James Bible believer. He'll tell you that. But he does say, now the Greek word here means this. The Greek word here means that. Which is really nothing that is needed and doesn't help the, the issue at all. So, so we get talking about, uh, about you know, using Greek and things like this. Now, with this in mind, I asked him this question. I want you to answer this question to yourself. We're sitting at this restaurant, Cuban pastor right here, this, this, uh, this preacher right here. I said, brother, I have a Greek grammar book in this hand. And I have the Bible in this hand. Now, by the way, guys, what's your final authority in all matters of faith and practice? Not the Greek grammar book? Okay, just check it. Because I asked him. The first thing I asked him is, do you accept the Bible as your final authority in all matters of faith and practice? Yes, he did. I do. I said, okay, I got a Greek grammar book here. And I got a Bible here. And this Greek grammar book has a rule. Now, you know what rule I'm talking about? Agape and fire. Hey, you can pick up. I'll bet you every Greek grammar book you pick up says agape is one kind, play is another. I said, this Greek grammar book has a rule, and this Bible violates the rule. Which one's wrong? He said, um, I, I don't understand the question. I said, okay. I said, I have a Greek grammar book in this hand. 
I have a Bible in this hand. The Greek grammar book has a rule. The Bible violates the Greek grammar book. Which one's wrong? <clears throat> I understand the question. I have a... I said, a third time. I said, I got a Greek grammar book in this hand. Bible in this hand. I said, this one has a rule. This one violates this one. Which one's wrong? You know, we're not supposed to dance. He was doing it sitting down. He said a third time. I don't understand the question. Of course, he doesn't understand the question. I'm asking him in English. I thought maybe he has a problem with which Bible, which, which hand I have the, you know. So I, I did. I said, I'll switch hands. I said, I have a Greek grammar book in this hand. I have a Bible in this hand. This Greek grammar book has a rule. This Bible violates the Greek grammar book. Which one is wrong? And the fourth time he said, I, I don't understand the question. But what he didn't see was my Cuban pastor friend. Who loves King James Bible? He is sitting there. He is, he's not even looking at him. He is looking straight across the table. He has got a knife. He's got a fork and a knife. <laughs> and his face is beet red. And when this guy danced the fourth time, he goes like this. He doesn't even look at him. He goes, He's not the hardest question, brother. <laughs> and this guy goes, I mean, listen, we got a mad Cuban next to you with a knife. You will change your doctrine to get out of there, okay? He's in the, he's in a booth, pal. He ain't getting out but feet first. And he goes, He did. He goes, He goes, <laughs> and then we went to the motel we were staying. I gave him the test that you just took, and he failed. You know why? Because there's no difference between a God and flat. And if you say there is, then you say that Jesus misused it. You say that John, under the, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, misused it. You say that Peter, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, misused it. You say that Paul, under the inspiration of, of the Holy Spirit, used it. Okay, okay. So you say, well, you think you're telling all the Greek grammar books that they're wrong. I'd rather mess with those guys than those guys. Yeah. Now, the answer to the great question. I'm going to let you vote again. How many of you say this? If Jesus Christ were on the earth right now and he spoke English, how many of you say he would say ain't? How many of you say he would not say ain't? You know what the answer is? How would I know? <laughs> well, really, guys, I wouldn't know. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Well, wait, wait, listen. We, can't, we wouldn't know if the Lord would say ain't or not. But if I had an English grammar book in this hand, and it said ain't is not good English, and I show that to the Lord, and he says, huh, ain't that something? <laughs> you know what I know? It's good grammar. You say, but the, Greek, the English grammar book. The English grammar book was not inspired. The English grammar book is no more inspired than the Greek grammar book. But these three guys were inspired, and this one was God. And they never acknowledged two kinds of love. So if you do, you are going to have to say that those four are wrong. All right? Okay, let's take a break.